New wine has got to be put into a new wine skin. Otherwise, the old wine skin, which has grown dry and brittle, will burst when the wine starts fermenting. Jesus is talking in the reference to the to the criticism he was receiving from scribes and Pharisees and religionists, who they were saying, how come your disciples don't behave the way John the Baptist's disciples behaved? How come your disciples go with you to parties when John the Baptist lived out in a desert like a true prophet would? And, and how come you go and you eat and drink wine and you 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 hang out with sinners like prostitutes and tax collectors. This guy, he lived in a pure life. He lived way out there in the wilderness and preached repentance. You come and preach healing. He was out there in the wilderness with locusts, legs hanging out his mouth and honey dribbling down his camel hair coat and he lived a rough, austere, ascetic life. But you, you're in, in town. You're partying with the rich people. You're, you're hanging out. What? And, and Jesus said, he said, look, when John the Baptist came, you didn't like him then. You said, he's not like the guys before him. But then you got used to him. He said, oh, so this is, the, this is what God is doing now. But now I've come along. John's faded. This is a new move of God. And now you're having trouble with this one. And so you're always resistant to the new thing. And that is a human condition. It's not just a Christian condition. When something new comes aboard, oh, everybody says, no, 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 because we like the old. We like the familiar. We like what we are, we are comfortable with. But this is uncomfortable. We, it's new to us. But I want you to, to broaden your thinking here tonight to embrace a possibly new idea to embrace the idea of actually becoming a connect group leader, to embrace the idea of going to C3 College or to embrace bigger ideas like planting churches around the world. There are all kinds of amazing things that God has got in mind for anybody who's willing to open up their heart and make the changes because new wine will not be poured into an old wineskin. God won't do it. If you are unwilling to make some changes and adjustments, you're not going to find new wine coming into your world. I have found every time I adjust church structure to accommodate for the moving of the Holy Spirit, He comes. Every time I limit church structure to the moving of the Holy Spirit, He stays away. If I draw near to Him and make adjustments in my life for Him to fill this life, then He comes. But if I make adjustments that turn down the amount of time I spend with Him, that turn down the amount of time we're going to spend in church, to turn down the prayer life, to turn down, then I will find that I start to starve, that God actually, is, He withdraws somehow. If I move away from God, God moves away. But if I move towards God, God moves towards me. The Bible says that. The Bible says, draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. Now the drawing near may not just be once a week in church, we go, oh God, oh God, oh, and you reach out to him. Drawing near, you can do that every day of your life. We're either drawing near or we're drawing away. The things that keep us stuck from drawing near and getting new wine from God, it can be a lot of things. Fear, pride, uh, complacency, comfortableness. But let me tell you one of the things that will always keep you stuck where you are, and that's a refusal to admit where you are. When I refuse to accept that I am stuck, then I'm going to stay stuck. If I say, no, I'm good, no problem with me, yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm good. You're letting a word like this go straight over you, but you may not be stuck in all your life, but maybe one area, one area where you are stuck with unforgiveness. You haven't forgiven somebody. It keeps on coming back. He said, oh, I can never forgive that person. Might be a parent, might be a brother, might be a sister, but you're stuck and it's holding on to you. It's holding you back from actually escaping and being set free. Man, I feel such an impact inside my soul right now that I am speaking to somebody here and you are sick because of it. You have a constant illness that won't, won't go because of this this unforgiveness you're holding on to. Listen, your freedom comes in admitting to yourself, I'm an idiot. 
What am I holding on to this thing for? I'm gonna let it go right here tonight in the name of Jesus. And you'll find freedom and healing will come to you instantly. Some of us, we're stuck in a physical condition or we're stuck in a mental condition or we're stuck in an emotional condition. We're just always angry or always anxious or always something. If you start to battle that thing, you will start to win. But do not give up the fight. The moment you give up the fight and say, oh, that's just the way I am, you have accepted your reality as being far less than who you really are. There is a new you. There is a new you on the other side of the escape from Egypt. And as you take a step, you're going to find yourself moving out. Repentance is an old word, I know. But it's, it's a very, very, very good word because it's the word that means I'm running this way, but oh, I'm going in the wrong direction. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna recognize that I am going in the wrong direction and I'm gonna turn around. That is what repentance is. It is admitting I'm, I'm not doing the right thing. I've got the wrong friends. One of, one of the most common challenges I would find as a pastor to people who are falling into church, out of church, into church, out of church, they just never quite get, is to choose friends. Choose the right friends who you marry, who you, who you align your life with is going to be who you are. I can tell exactly who you are by the friends you've got. I can tell you exactly what your future is going to be like by the friends you've got today. Your friends are an expression of who you are comfortable with. If you're surrounded by people who are critical, that's because you're comfortable with that. But if you said tonight, I'm not comfortable with criticizing other people anymore. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to admit it to myself. Instead of justifying it to yourself saying, I'm all right. What's wrong with that? A little bit, you know, it's, 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 as long as it's true, at least, at least I'm being honest. Honesty is not an atonement for cruelty. Honesty is no atonement for anything to tell you the truth. In fact, I, I would not call myself always completely honest when I'm talking to people. Not, not everybody, but I will say, you are an awesome person. I will say that even to an idiot sometimes. I say it to myself in the mirror sometimes. You idiot. No, you're an awesome person. You're going to get over this. You're going to get to the other side. Even God will lie about you. He will say you are a justified holy person and you know you're not. You know you're not. But are you going to agree with God? You can agree with the lies of God or the lies of the world. And they're not lies, people. The lies of God are what? truth is because he's relating to a future you his you in the future his you now which you is God relating to that guy he said hey you're amazing he said, no, I'm not. You haven't seen your future mirror. Look into the mirror of your future. Look at you. He sees how you're going to be. He'll bless you today on according to that person out there. This is such good preaching. All right. Can I go a little deeper? You okay with deeper? Okay, so, so let's do a little, quick little Bible study here. Okay. You want to get out of Egypt, out of bondage. But you're going to find there is a devil who does not want you to get out of that freedom because he's the one who's got you. He's only happy when he's got you. So, so when Moses comes before Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and he says, hey, let the people go. And he throws down the rods and he performs signs until Egypt is struggling and suffering. And finally, the king of Egypt calls Moses and said, all right, I'll let, the, I'll let the people go. And this is what he says to him in Exodus 8, verse 28. 
So the king of Egypt says, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only you shall not go very far. That's the first compromise that you're gonna be offered. Look, okay, you wanna, you wanna do this Christian thing? Okay, 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 go, go down to church once a month or whatever. Don't go too far with this though. Don't go too far away from your old bondage. Hang around and, 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 and stay, stay close to the old friend. Don't go too far with this whole thing. You know, who knows who those people are? Who knows what's going on down there? Don't go, you what, you go to Bible college? Whoa, that's way too far. What, you're giving a tithe? Every, no, that's too far. Just, just go a little way with this thing. Just, just, just a little fire. Don't get too excited. Don't get carried away. For goodness sake, who knows, who knows what's, what your life could be if you were doing something else? Oh, there's so many things you're going to give up and you're going to lose all that fun, all the parties. Come on, man. Don't go too far with this whole thing. Moses replied. He said, we're going to go all the way. Three-day journey to the mountain. That three-day journey is a cross, a death, a burial, and a resurrection as a new person. It's a final. The old life is gone. I'm going the three-day journey. I don't know about you, but it means I'm killing that old life. I'm coming out of Egypt all the way. I am not going back to where I have been. I have made a decision. You got water baptized last Sunday night. You said, I have decided I'm leaving that world. I'm going into the watery grave and I'm emerging a brand new person. The second compromise in his ex Exodus 10, 7. The king of Egypt, servants said to him, how long shall this man be a snare to us? Let the men go, that they may serve the Lord their God. Do you know that Egypt is destroyed? The king of Egypt, hold on. Moses said, so now he is saying, okay, okay, you want to go. All right, go your big three-day journey. But just the men, only the men. Don't start telling anybody else about Jesus. Don't start reproducing just, just, just sort of go and do your man thing. Being a man Christian, you know. But whatever you do, don't reproduce. Don't create more of you. And they replied, they said, we're going to go. Do you not know? And, and Moses said, we will go with our young and our old, with our sons, with our daughters, with our flocks and our herds. We will go because we want to hold a party for Jesus. We wanna, everything is going. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not just coming out with a piece of me to follow Jesus. I'm bringing my family. I'm bringing my sons. I'm bringing my daughters. I'm bringing my house. I'm bringing my business. I'm bringing everything with me. And we're going to serve the Lord with everything I've got. Third compromise Exodus 10, 24, then Pharaoh called to Moses and said, go serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and herds be kept back. Let your little ones go also. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, okay. You want to you take the men and the women and the children, blah, 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 blah. go. Just leave your business here. Just leave your flocks and your herds. Whatever you do, don't take your finances. Don't, don't, don't actually walk out with your business as well. Don't try and do the right thing in your business. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> don't, don't do the, I mean, imagine all the contracts you'd lose. Oh, if you clean up your business, oh, good Lord, what's gonna happen? You might be having to sell your house. What if, what if just, just don't go all the way. Don't start reproducing. Whatever you do, don't take that money with you. Don't, whatever you do. Leave that, listen to me, whatever you leave back there, it's gonna get you to go backwards. It'll be a handle on your back all the days of your life. Following Jesus is a complete mission. It has given everything to say, I am gonna be completely set free. If I want new wine, 
I got to be a new wineskin. I can't put new wine in the old person, in the old Egyptian. I got to come out of that land and start living a whole new life, living a whole new way, living a whole new lifestyle. I got to have new friends. I got to get a new pathway. It's called being born again. And you're now in the family of God.